I'm very pleased to welcome you on this special occasion, our celebration of excellence, dedicated to recognizing and honoring our standing students across the several academic areas or concentration that comprise our communication nature. This special event has become a key tradition in our department. We always look forward to celebrating our students' academic efforts, each one of them individually and collectively epitomizes Eastern mission as the state's liberal arts university. In addition, we'll be honoring and inducting students to the Lamba Pi Eta Honor Society, Tau Nu Communication Department chapter. To all students being honored, always keep in mind that you have been selected not only based on your grade point average and performance, but also because of your considerable promise as a professional in this field and your potential, potential as an ethical and contributing, contributing member of society. Again, I congratulate you, the faculty that mentor you, and very special, your parents, for their unwavering support throughout this important journey in your life. Now, I would like to uh, invite our next speaker, recognizing uh, Professor John Satoski, who will be presenting the radio station WEX. Uh, students being honored. Thank you very much. Well, I'm here to uh, recognize some student broadcasters over at WECS. According to the National Association of Broadcasters, Americans listen to radio over 240 million a week. And I like to think that 200 million of them listen to WECS 90.1 FM and WECS.com. Now, that may be a slight exaggeration, but when you hear from our students in a minute, you'll understand why they have a very loyal and diverse audience. We've always been a, a part of the Willimantic, the greater Eastern Connecticut community with programming from NPR, but we pride ourselves in student-generated programming. And we're on the air 24-7, and it's incredible that we have people that are two o'clock in the morning putting out programs. In a point of personal privilege here, although not on the on the schedule and the program, are two gentlemen that work for WECS for four years. As you know, we have a new facility, but during the transition, there was a tremendous amount of work as we had to move the studio twice, once into Goddard Hall and then into the planetarium, as well as assembling $200,000 worth of equipment in the new studio. I was listening to the earnings call from IBM last week, and Gina Rometty, the CEO, was talking about AI, artificial intelligence, and how it's going to affect 100% of the jobs in America in the next 10 years. And she said the people that are going to survive we need to be curious, independent thinkers, able to adapt and be flexible, among other attributes. And the two people I would like to stand up right now are microcosms of the student body here. And they have just risen to the, uh, whatever the problem was, they have risen to, the, uh, to, to solve the problems. They look at problems, not as problems, but as, as challenges. Everything from wiring up equipment to programming to FCC rules and regulations, putting programming reports is required by the federal government on the air. Just a myriad of things. Uh, we had to move 20,000 CDs almost overnight. They deal with the music companies and so forth, and we couldn't operate without them. So maybe just uh, if they would stand up and be recognized, we have Amira Bella and Rip and rear, you guys here? Give me up in the back. Really, thank you. 
much, guys. And they are seniors. They are leaving. And we are a family when you work with someone for four years. And again, it's 24 hours operation, radio, and everything related to broadcasting is part of their DNA, and that, that's how it works. So, moving along, let me call our four uh, recipients here coming up right now. I guess this might be in alphabetical order, although I forgot the alphabet a long time ago, although I do know that Z is at the end of the alphabet. <laughs> so, um, we have Kate Barry, please come forward, Kate, and along with that. Should have been more organized up here. <laughs> Kate, that's yours. Congratulations. We'll all shake hands at the end because that has something to do here. Robert. And, and we have Menar and Annie, and I asked her what her name stands for, Menar, and she said, Arabic Lighthouse. And she is a beacon of light on the air. Oh. Only take a second, but perhaps you ladies and gentlemen would like to say a word about your experience on WECS and what you hope to be doing when you graduate here. Would you mind doing that? Hi, I'm Kate. I did not prepare anything for this, but I guess that's one of the best things about WECS is that before this, I was like a really shy kid and I would never speak in front of people like this. I mean, I'm still kind of nervous, but like, being able to go on the air and just like have to talk and like come up with something on the spot, it's like, it's wild, it's really crazy. But like that radio station, being able to do that has really helped me. Um, but I have a show every Friday from three to four, it's called What I Got. And it's really fun because basically I just come up with a playlist, usually it has a little theme and we just have a good time for an hour and like play some good classic rock. But I've been, I've been getting there with like 90s music. That's recent, right? <laughs> um, so yeah, I don't know. I just, I love the radio community and everything that it's done for me. It's made me so much more of an outgoing person and so much more of a person who's open-minded and willing to try new things and experiment in my life, so. Thank you. I'm super tall, so it's going to be that awkward microphone moment. <laughs> I'm Megan Brooks. I run a Meg radio show on Thursdays from noon to one, and it's my second semester running the show, and I have a blast. I focus on 80s music, so anything from 1980 to 1989, and I also do tidbits of interesting facts and history. So today I actually focused on the creation and the building of the architecture for Notre Dame, and I also spoke about the fire that happened last week. Two weeks ago, I spoke about like historic volcanic eruptions, and I also speak about all different sorts of interesting topics, in my opinion. And it's it's a humbling experience, in my opinion. I really enjoy sitting behind the microphone and blabbing to everybody that has a chance to listen to me. <laughs> I have I have a good time, and I feel really honored that I have this opportunity with everybody. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Hi, um, just like this speech, my radio show is all winged, like I don't rehearse anything, so um, everything that I come is like, like co that comes out is very natural and like it's like I'm having a conversation with a wall basically, but it's fun and it's made me more um, outgoing and, and it's a lot, it's a, it's a blast, I have to agree with Megan, but I also like the fact that there's a community within the uh, radio production and like you have people come in and out of the station, even when it was just in the planetarium, like a closet. But now that it's like a big station and like there's a lot more like expanded like equipment, it's a lot of fun. And yeah, my show is on Thursdays at one and I play indie mixes because I just didn't think there was anything like that on the radio. 
So yeah, if you guys would like to, I don't know, relax, mellow out during like <laughs> the mid of the day, the middle of the day, just you could <coughs> listen to my radio show. Thank you. Um, uh, so I'm Robert Lockerbie. Um, my I first did this is my first semester of doing the radio show. And when I first did it, uh, it was first at like two o'clock on Wednesday afternoons. And now it's like pretty much switched to Thursday nights at midnight. So I'm pretty much lucky if anyone is listening. Um, yeah, I'm pretty much try to get my friends to listen to it as much as I can and try to spread the word about it. But at first I was very nervous and like I was very like shaky just because I'm very shy, very awkward, but I feel with this uh, this station, I somehow am gaining my confidence more and more each and every single time I do the show um, every week. And my the radio show that I do, um, it's so random because effort like I could play anything from like Auburn got metal like just random metal music to like chilling out to like Stevie Wonder the next moment and some of it doesn't blend but I try to make it blend as much as I can but. Um, so if you're really just want, and I feel the reason why I kind of like wanted to do that because I really don't like segregate, like how segregated uh, radio stations can get. I just wanted like a broad uh, selection of music. So if you want to listen to just some random songs that don't go together really, um, just tune in on midnight and yeah, um, thank you. <laughs> In conclusion, I just want to uh, thank President Nunez for her continued support for WCS. One of her first initiatives when she arrived was to liberate the station from the cave behind the scene dock, the loading dock, the windowless pit. We were down there, and she created a world-class uh, facility that was the envy of almost every other station around. And then I remember a chance meeting when she was coming out of a uh, television production in the studio. And this was when there was financial Armageddon back in 2008. Bear Stearns had just gone under and the state, uh, we couldn't even buy a paper clip. And things looked really bleak. And she said, you know, John, I just completed work on funding for entire renovation of the media center. And not that I would ever doubt her, but I was saying, really? <laughs> and fast forward the tape. We moved into the brand new facility last fall. Uh, we're still in the final processes of uh, programming and adding CD shells and things like that. But Goddard Hall is going to be finished in next year, uh, next fall, we will have a formal opening. But if you're around campus, uh, you are around campus, but before you leave, I invite you just kind of to walk through if you don't think you're going to be back in the immediate future, because it is just a wonderful space. It is unbelievable. unbelievable. Sometimes I just sit out there and look at the artwork, <laughs> and the light is abundant. There's glass. Even on a gloomy day, you can sit there and really feel uplifted in the interaction with students walking by and so forth. So you really owe it to yourself to walk by there. And thank you very much, President Nunes. We now have the pleasure to invite Dr. Elsa Nunez, President of the University, to give you a warm welcome. calendar and sometimes I get upset because I can't stay for every event every moment but you can well imagine today I have five evening events and it's wonderful they're all celebratory and I'm eager to be there and I'm just grateful that I'm invited to say hello to the group and to congratulate my students uh, when I see this event on my calendar the award ceremony and I'm invited every year it puts a big smile on my face I'm so proud of my communication students and so happy that they're here at Eastern Block and fulfilling their potential. I want to especially thank all of you, the family members and friends who are here, um, to celebrate their success. Thank you for being here. As always, I'm delighted to be here with you this evening and to thank Professor Gomez and his faculty colleagues for inviting me. 
Under Professor Gomez's guidance, the department again has flourished. He has served as chair of the department several times, and each time he does it with such zest and commitment to the students that it is inspiring. Thank you, Dr. Gomez. take a minute to applaud the entire faculty of the department. Without their guidance and support, our students would not be here tonight to accept their awards or be inducted into Lambda Pi Eta Honor Society. In addition to leading uh, classroom discussions and mentoring the various hands-on learning experiences available to the communication students, this faculty has been very busy revising and updating the curriculum. They never stay quiet and, and you know, and, and stay in place. They're constantly moving to make sure the curriculum responds to the student needs and also to the market. They develop new concentrations in advertising, applied media production, leadership communication, media writing and journalism, public relations, and in other individualized concentrations. And they've done all that while moving into their new home. The, John, thank you for mentioning the new building and it's faculty like you that inspire us to try to get the best for you and your students. The renovated and modernized communication building is just beautiful. Getting the new television studio and radio stations up to speed with all the new technology in place was a yeoman's effort on the part of the faculty and I thank them. If you haven't seen the building, please stop by and see it. I urge you to take a tour through our admissions office to see what our students has, what they've been enjoying all year. I also want to thank the family and friends again for being here and to sharing the, the accomplishments of the students who are being honored tonight. Not everyone is a computer programmer or an economist, to name but two of our 40 majors, but all of us are communicators. It's a major that matters and that crosses all, all walks of life. At Eastern, we make the point that all of our students need to learn communication skills, how to write professionally, public speaking, presentation skills, because communication, as you and I know, is the key to the success of every occupation. The students in the communication department take it further. They are very serious people. You are the professional communicators that the rest of us depend on to report the news of the day, to provide entertainment, to help us solve the challenges facing our society through discourse, dialogue, and honest debate. When I look at the different awards being presented tonight, I'm reminded how broad the field really is and how fortunate our students are to practice their skills in so many ways. They practice it on campus, as you know, they practice it in internships with the hands-on experience, and they take advantage of every club and organization through the development of their communication skills as well as their leadership skills. That being said, that also means that our graduates have a wide range of career opportunities to pursue. They can be in photography, publication design, radio, television, public relations, journalism, digital media, and media research. Congratulations to all our students for your awards and for your accomplishments. We are so proud of you. Honor Society for Communications, and we're so proud of each of them. If you look at the name, Lambda Pi Eta represents the, what Aristotle described in his book, Rhetoric, as the three artistic proofs of persuasion. Logos, Lambda, mean, meaning logic, Pathos, Pi, relating to emotion, and Ethos, Eta, defined as character and ethics. I know each of you, as a student, seeks your own way to communicate with reason, with passion, and with a professional code of ethics, and you'll do that as professionals as well. Hold these values dear to your heart, and you will do well. I also want to explore the, words, uh, the word communication for a minute. The word comes from the Latin communis, which means common or sharing, and the Latin verb communicare means make something common. In my thinking, that means your profession is about making complex, mysterious world accessible, making the experience we have in common available to each of us, sharing them widely. Yours is an important role in a big democratic society like ours, and I thank you for deciding that this would be your life's work. 
You will so soon join other graduates who are working in television stations, public relations agencies, in state government, in the corporate sector, here in Connecticut, and some of you will be in other places across the United States. I want to close by quoting the 19th century American author Nathaniel Hawthorne, who wrote The Scarlet Letter, The House of Seven Gables, and many other books. He said, words so innocent and powerless as they are standing in a dictionary, how potent for good and evil they become in the hands of one who knows how to combine them. Use your words well, my students. Eastern communication students will do good with them, and all of us, you and I, will be the better for it. Thank you. John, and I'm an assistant professor at the Department of Communication. I do health communication and teach how health campaigns promote um, public and individual health. In addition to my expertise, I also have been teaching communication research um, this class for uh, the past five years. Tonight, it is a great pleasure and honor to see my favorite students receive the Award of Excellence. As a faculty of communication department, I have to admit that many communication students chose this major because they thought we do not cover math and statistics in our curriculum. Unfortunately, they were wrong. Yeah. <laughs> communication research, the course I taught for uh, the past five years is one of the requirements and these students experienced a lot of headaches in my class. As I teach the class every semester, a couple of students surprises me with their research projects. They show me many evidences that they have outstanding academic uh, writing and analytical skills. As I said before, this course is not what they actually expected when they chose this major. However, many communication students represent their idea and support their arguments by using math and statistics. So personally, I'm very happy to present these three students who received the Award of Excellence in Research. So, um, these three students over here took communication classes, worked very hard during the whole semester, developed their in-class research project for the future opportunities, and finally distinguished themselves as undergraduate researchers at the 2019 National Conference on Undergraduate Research. We know that their research study have some or maybe many limitations, but these students tried their best and found the opportunity to present their study findings to other researchers. I believe this experience provided a unique networking and learning opportunities for the students. This was not a coincidence at all. Although it could be very challenging, these students clearly set up the goals, followed the instructions, and worked very hard to achieve their goals. I would like to mention that this could not be available without having outstanding support from the university. Thanks to the support of President Nunes, um, their travel expenses were all covered by the school. 
I also would like to mention that this couldn't be done without having excellent communication faculty members. Thank you so much to all communication professors who have prepared and mentored these senior students here. In addition to these three recipients of excellence in research award, I'm very happy tonight as I can see my favorite students are waiting to receive the award. So I wish I could see more of them in the event um, as I know many communication seniors work very hard in each class. Now I'd, I would like to introduce Dr. Otterbeck. He is an advisor of ETV and he will recognize excellence in tele, uh, television. Thank you. Pretty good view from up here, actually. I don't think I've ever uh, actually stood up. I have to switch glasses, and now all of you guys are just a big blur. <laughs> good afternoon, students, family, and friends. Uh, for those of you who do not know me, my name is Andrew Utterback, and I am a professor in the Department of Communication. Uh, my specialties are studio-based television production, news packaging, and First Amendment law. For the past 14 years, I have had the pleasure to be one of the faculty advisors uh, to the Eastern Television Group, more commonly called ETV. One activity of the ETV Group is the weekly production of a live newscast, ETV News, it's a 30-minute, entirely student-produced news program that is seen live in the Charter Cable Market of Northeast Connecticut on Thursday nights at 7 o'clock. Throughout the academic year, the ETV group also produces hours and hours and hours of coverage of ECSU sporting events for the Department of Athletics. This includes basketball, softball, lacrosse, baseball, rugby, volleyball, and on and on and on and et cetera. I have to tell you, the sports coverage is impressive. It's worth noting that ETV is a co-curricular club. In plain terms, it gives the students the opportunity to practice the skills that they learn in the classes that we teach. I am pleased to report to you that the ETV group has grown over the years into a powerful social and professional group of students and alumni. Former ETV students are working for every television station in the state of Connecticut, as well as the networks ESPN, NBC, CBS, and Fox. Annually, it is my honor and my sorrow to recognize the graduating seniors of the ETV group. On a personal note to the honorees, I'll miss you. Please keep in touch and Godspeed. So please join me in honoring the ETV class of 2019. So this is April, and this is Paige. Uh, Alex is not here. Alex is actually working at ESPN right now. Uh, and Zoe uh, is very active in the theater department. I believe she's just down the hall at a rehearsal. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Mr. Martin Seymour, photography.
Thank you, Andrew. I'm Martin Seymour. I teach photography classes in the communication department and also publication design. And I'd like to give out our awards. I can have Josh Allard. Woo! Josh is graduating in May as a new media studies major. Uh, he's always been a very enthusiastic student. This semester he volunteered to TA for my photography classes, helping to set up studio equipment and help other students with their understanding of the camera settings. And Josh, I want to thank you very much. Archambault is graduating this May as a digital art and design major. He's a great depth of knowledge in photography and web coding. He's interned as a graphic designer for several years, and as with Josh, he has great enthusiasm for photography and design. Josh, I'm um, sorry, Isaac plans to pursue a career. <laughs> Kevin Carpenter. Excellence in publication design. This is for excellence in publication design. Kevin is graduating in May as a communication major, and he's excelled in publication design with innovative professional designs for assignments, and has an intuitive grasp of InDesign software and a thorough knowledge of Adobe products. Kevin plans to pursue a career in advertising. Stephanie from, from Mount. <laughs> Stephanie will graduate in May 2020, majoring in criminology. She is an excellent photographer, and her images display an intuitive sense of composition and creative solutions for illustrating concept assignments. During lectures, she shows intellectual curiosity, is very easier, eager to ask relevant questions. And thank you, Stephanie. Logan Hinton. Logan will graduate in May 2020. He's majoring in communication. He's an excellent student, excelling in both photography and publication design. So it's for excellence in both topics. He uh, embraces assignments with great enthusiasm and creativity. Logan's always showed a great curiosity and question and uh, in relevant questions during lectures. He plans to pursue a career in photography and graphic design. And Aaron. Aaron Windsor will graduate May 2020, majoring in communication with a concentration in advertising and a minor in digital art and design. She's a standout student, always participating in lab, lab assignments with great enthusiasm and again, asking relevant questions during the lecture. She's currently working as an assistant to the sports information director for the athletic department, where she photographs sporting events, edits photos, and helps maintain the website. She plans to pursue advertising and sports photography. Congratulations. The most important thing a liberal arts university can do for its students is to give them an education still valuable 20 years after they graduate. 
Most of the jobs that people will work on in the 21st century have not been created yet. So the dilemma for those of us who are trying to educate the current generation is finding out what will matter years from now. The machines will change, but human nature won't. The need to communicate won't. The Greeks had two words that we translate as knowledge, techne and episteme. Techne means knowing, while episteme means understanding. A liberal arts education wants to educate the whole person in not just how to operate a particular machine, but how to see a problem and find out ways to solve that problem and to work together to solve that problem and finally, to communicate what we have learned in a way that will be useful to those who come after us. We call that critical thinking. We call that a liberal arts education. I have learned every day and every semester from the students I teach, especially those who work on the campus lantern. I would like to introduce you to one, two, three, four, four excellent writers, Elena Sarantino, Rebecca Brancato, Robin Blasberg, and Marquise Parker. Would you come on? But wait, there's more. Uh, I, I would like to say a few words about uh, the New Media Studies uh, uh, Department, as they, the New Media Studies major, as they make their way uh, toward, toward, toward the uh, stage. I sat on the committee that uh, created the new media studies major. Uh, Dr. Gomez was the dean at the time and the head of that uh, uh, committee to create the new media studies major. It wasn't an easy thing to do. What were we going to call it? Uh, should we call it uh, the electronic media studies major, the digital studies major? But what if in the future information isn't exchanged digitally? What if it's not exchanged electronically? What if we use DNA strands to carry information back and forth in the, in the future? What should we call this thing? So we decided to call it new media because whatever new media comes along, it's always going to be new media. So we hope always to be relevant. A degree, <coughs> gentlemen, from Eastern Connecticut State University qualifies you, as a matter of fact, authorizes you to work as hard as you can for the rest of your life. <laughs> but I hope it also helps you to find a job that rewards you in other ways. A job that helps you contribute to the common good and to a personal life that is rich and rewarding. My name is Edmund Chabot. I teach uh, in the communication department. I teach history of communication, theory, script writing, and new media. I've learned from uh, Josh Allard and Daniel Petronas uh, in the short time that I've gotten to know them. It seems like a long time to them, but it seems like a very short time to me. So gentlemen, please come up and accept your reward.
But wait, there's more. <laughs> Please allow me to introduce uh, Olubenga Chris Ayene, who teaches public relations and is the advisor of PR, uh, for PR SSA. Chris. Thank you, everyone. Dipska, uh, my colleagues, uh, parents, <laughs> friends, and family. It gives me pleasure to um, address you and talk uh, glowingly about the students that I'm here to recognize. The tradition of recognizing publication students began about 15 years ago. So you'd be right to say some of our alums are already moms and dads themselves now. Jane Greenwood from uh, Greenwich, Connecticut, graduated in 2004. She was the first PRSSA president. She's now a senior program director of PR at Emory International in New York City. She's newly married. She's expected. So I'm really excited when I talk about all these people. Tracy Hooders, who is now Mrs. Bush, graduated in 2006 and is currently director of fire services and operations at Space 150 in New York City. So you see why we do what we do when we mentor these students and advise them. Um, the young people that I'm going to recognize today stand on the shoulders of these, those people before them who worked hard to build the pre-professional association uh, that they have been very able members of. They have already started to make their marks. Uh, two weeks ago, they posted a very powerful panel, which of course, uh, brought in professionals from outside. I was pretty impressed uh, based on the uh, showing of guests and the students who came to more or less uh, listen to those panelists. So they are already learning and they are showing some of those skills that they've learned in the classroom. They have started to make such strong marks. Uh, last year we were in Boston, I think. Uh, some of them probably have attended probably two or three regional or national conferences. And only uh, maybe a week or two ago, we were also across the country in Portland, Oregon, to attend the National Students uh, Conference. So they, on these occasions, meet potential employers. It also builds some of those interpersonal skills that they need to be able to excel in the industry. So I'm really glad uh, how they've come out. Um, although some of them are living in me, um, I'm assured of the potentials already shown by uh, Ryan Taco, who's getting ready to take on the leadership of the PRSSA this coming year. So it gives me immense pleasure to uh, bring up uh, uh, on the stage Marisa Simonetti, who is currently the president, Melissa Henowitz, Jessica Henowitz. Uh, I'm lucky to get two of them. Uh, in all of my classes, earlier on, I was always mistaking them. Uh, so you get two for one. And uh, Emily Graham, and Olivia Gordon. No, we're looking for the certificates. They are going to arrive. <laughs> My prayer to award is to this is a new media studies campus lantern <laughs> campus lantern. Oh, I think I have it wrong. Have it here. Okay, here yeah. Olivia. Jessica. <laughs> Melissa. <laughs> and uh, last but not least, Marissa Simonenko. No, no. <laughs> I've always been lucky to have uh, you know, an excellent set of uh, young ladies 
uh, I'm delighted that uh, Ryan has taken up the mantle. If, he's, uh, if he becomes the president of PRSSA next year, he's going to be the first male president of the PRSSA. So he's actually... I'm a professor here in the communication department. <coughs> Leadership communication is the department's newest concentration. It brings together all of those interpersonal and organizational skills that are foundational for success in many careers. I'd like to present our inaugural Leadership Award to Maria Elena Ruiz Gonzalez. Uh, Elena serves as a student representative on the CSCU Board of Regents. She's the vice chair of the Student Advisory Council. She's testified before the Appropriations Committee of the General Assembly. She's active in campus activities. She's the Vice President of Freedom at Eastern, Secretary of the Student Government Association, and she's a pro. She did not even need any of the skills that we allege to be teaching because she handles media interviews, radio conversations, like a pro. Um, she has it all already. She manages to sound conversational while still sneaking her talking points into the conversation and you know, really driving things forward. She exemplifies those qualities of leadership that we hope to nurture in this new concentration going forward. It gives me great pleasure to present the National Communication Scholar Award today. As you may know, it goes to a member of Lambda Pi Eta who demonstrates excellence in academic achievement, professional potential, and commitment to the discipline. I would suggest that these three characteristics describe the award winners today. Yes, I said winners. Two young women have been selected to receive this award. I have a sneaking suspicion this is not the first time they have been called upon to share something. They are twins, and being the daughter of a twin myself, I know something about how twins can be both alike and different. Let me highlight just a bit about each of them to allow you to see how each has achieved the excellence necessary for this award. Ms. Melissa Hanowitz has pursuing a double major in psychology and communication. She has been inducted into honor societies in both majors and has worked as an intern and junior consultant. She has been a teaching assistant, a research assistant, and a tutor in the psychology of adolescence. She has conducted independent research on predictors of workplace exclusion and submitted it for publication. Ms. Jessica Henowitz is pursuing a double major in psychology and communication. She has been inducted into honor societies for both majors and has worked as an intern and a junior consultant. She's been a teaching assistant, a research assistant, and a tutor in social psychology. She has conducted independent research on love contracts 
in the workplace and submit it for publication. Each of these young women demonstrates excellence in academic achievement with excellent grades, the ability to teach others the material, and the ability to produce their own independent research. They also demonstrate professional potential by gaining applied experience in multiple settings and building a teaching and research portfolio while still undergraduates. Their commitment to the discipline is evidenced by their membership in and leadership of organizations designed to strengthen their disciplines. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Jessica Henowitz and Ms. Melissa Henowitz for their achievements. Next, as Dr. Chivo would say, there is more. Okay, we'd like uh, to invite our retiring professor, John, Dr. John here. Would you please come up here? seven years ago, and I thought I'd just like to share with you a little bit of what the world was like uh, that year. Uh, gas cost 91 cents a gallon. A postage stamp was 20 cents. World leaders included Margaret Thatcher, Indira Gandhi, Yuri Andropov of the Soviet Union. The first artificial heart was implanted. The Space Shuttle Challenger took its inaugural flight, Sally Ride's inaugural flight as well. Uh, the IRA was busy bombing everything in London. Uh, Award-winning movies included Return of the Jedi, Tootsie, Flashdance, Yentl, E.T. Um, top of the charts, uh, The Police, Every Breath You Take, and Michael Jackson's Thriller. Uh, the best traditional blues recording, Grammy, went to Clarence Gatemouth Brown for All Right Again. John, I understand this one. Um, <laughs> uh, the Mario Brothers video game was first introduced. The first issue of USA Today was published. The first mobile phones about the size of your iPad thickened uh, were introduced by Motorola. The first CD player was sold in Japan. ARPANET opened to the public, becoming the internet. Uh, Diet Coke was introduced. Disney's Epcot opened. Cabbage Patch dolls were the hot gift. Uh, and the final episode of that, MASH aired. Um, in those days, the entire communication department lived in one small office um, that is now a classroom, it used to be our radio station, um, except for a chair who got, was given a broom closet. And when I joined the small office, uh, John was the first person to welcome me to campus. He mentored me, <coughs> he told me the ins and outs, uh, and what to do and who to avoid. And, <laughs> <laughs> and it has made it a wonderful time here at Easter. <clears throat> Talking about history, uh, we have been someone who has made a lot of history in our department. I have uh, written a little essay here entitled Farewell to <coughs> Rome. Okay, Salmon, a king that, according to the Bible, was gifted, and riches, gifted with riches and wisdom, once said, there is an appointing time for everything. And there is a time for every event under heaven, a time to be silent and a time to speak. I would add to this, there is always a time to come and also a time to go. John, for you, it is a time to go. 
I thought they were marriage vows. They sound like it. But be proud of your 37 years on duty. You will go holding your head up and with a hearty smile, fair in both the soul and mind, and the satisfaction of a practically lifetime job well done. We, the faculty and staff of the communication department, feel proud to have shared with you many enlightening moments and to have navigated under your captainship okay, through rough waters, weathering many storms only to land us safely on that promised land of mission, goals, and academic excellence. And all of it for the benefit of our beloved students, whom we, spe <clears throat> whom we, especially you, have served with passion and dedication. And we will continue to do so. In ending, I'd like to paraphrase or maybe use an adapted quote by someone whose name escaped my memory, but I think that it encapsulates the department feelings, certainly mine, on this occasion. How lucky we are to have something that makes us say goodbye so hard. Okay, we're all going to miss you, John. Good luck on your future endeavors. Buen viaje y buena suerte. From the entire communication department, we'd like to present John with this object. Uh, <laughs> uh, that reads, Dr. John Hale, with true appreciation for your leadership and collegiality through the years, Department of Communication, Eastern Connecticut State University, 2019. Thank you, Jaime Gomez, and thanks to Dr. Terry Tolst Patkin. But she went to Cornell. I didn't mentor her that much, you know? <laughs> but really, um, this time of the year is special for me, not just because I'm retiring, hope that'll be special, but because we always honor our students here, and that's the best thing, that's the best part of the year, and I get to wear a tie. <laughs> And I said, this year I might wear a turtleneck, but then I decided, I had it on this morning, and my wife said, what are you doing, what are you doing? I said, it feels like someone really weak is choking me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I opted for the tie. <laughs> but seriously, I, I started here, doesn't seem like almost 37 years ago, but I started with almost nothing and have most of it left, I guess. <laughs> Um, things have changed. It, it, it didn't look a bit like this. I don't know what's in the archives, but it was, it, it was a strange looking place when you compare it to this. And we had kind of the same number of students, I'm sure a few less, but all these dorms, I can't believe it now. Um, it's just so much better. And the students throughout all these years have been wonderful to work with and the faculty that have, um, we've added on quite a few since I've been here, of course, not enough, but um, they've been wonderful and they've been a delight to work with. And the administration has been terrific, but this is not my night, this is yours and your families. And um, 
Thank you very much. That was a very sentimental part of the program. We're really going to miss it. We've seen it for a long time. OK, before we move to our great uh, every part of this uh, event has been great. We have celebrated. But for the second part, we're going to have the induction to the Honor Society, a very significant act to uh, that, you know, to manifest the academic excellence in this department. But before that, I really want to have a, a big round of applause for our students worker, Ismael Rivera, Joyce Figueroa, and Ashley Cooper. I would like to have a huge round of applause for Amanda Irwin, who has come to our department not long ago. He has really impacted it and worked with us on, on everything, especially bringing this event to life. She's our secretary, and I'd like to call her at the next stage. On behalf of the Communication Department, I welcome parents, students, and distinguished guests to the 2019 induction ceremony of the National Communication Honor Society, Lambda Pi Eta. This evening, the students we recognize are truly the best and the brightest, not only among Eastern students or Connecticut students, but among communication students nationwide. There are over 400 <coughs> chapters of Lambda Pi Eta at colleges and universities across the country. In order to be admitted to membership, they must meet strict national standards for academic achievement. In addition, each student must demonstrate interest in the field of communication, commitment to professional development, and they must uphold the highest standards of ethical behavior. Each of these students is impressive individually. You'll find their names in many places around campus. They perform in plays, write for the student newspaper, play on sports teams, produce television and radio programs, volunteer on campus and off to make the world a better place. Many of them manage this while holding down a full course load plus a job. Some have participated in regional and national professional conferences, some have worked in real world media outlets, some have already earned national recognition for the work. There are job offers and acceptances to graduate schools coming in every day. When you put that kind of talent and drive together, you end up with an irresistible force. And that's what our town new chapter has become. You'll see some of it reflected this evening as you watch the officers lead their peers in the induction ceremony. Some you won't be able to see directly, like the contributions they've made to help students in the local school system, or the fundraising they've done to leave a legacy for future students at Eastern. But I hope you'll be able to appreciate the atmosphere of mutual respect and commitment to academic excellence that makes these top students in the communication department a vital part of Eastern Connecticut State University. It is now my pleasure and privilege to introduce to you the chapter officers, Matthew, Emily, Santiago, and Josh. Hello. The name Lambda Pi Eta is represented by the Greek letters L, standing for Lambda, P, standing for Pi, and H standing for Eta, symbolizing what Aristotle described in his book, Rhetoric, as the three modes of persuasion. <coughs> Logos, meaning logic. Pathos, meaning emotion. And ethos, defined as character, credibility, and ethics. This candle of lighting ceremony will describe each of these Greek letters. Lambda Pi Eta was in initiated by the students of the Department of Communication at the University of Arkansas 
and then was endorsed by the faculty and founder, Dr. Stephen A. Smith, in 1985. The Speech Communication Association established Lambda Pi Eta as an affiliate organization and as the official National Communication Honor Society for undergraduates in 1994. In February 1996, Lambda Pi Eta was inducted in the Association of Color Hon College Honor Societies. There are currently 250 chapters worldwide. The first mode of persuasion is logos, or logic. In all aspects of scholarship and its applications to one life, logic plays a major role in deliberations and problem solving. Pathos, or emotional appeal, the second symbol of our organization, titles, in, encompasses a driving force that makes an organization vital and effective. The last mode of persuasion is ethos, or character credibility and ethics. Aristotle <laughs> sees character credibility as a primary means of affecting change in society and in one's life. Thus, it is appropriate that ethos is a major symbol of Lambda Pi Eta. Purposes of the Honor Society according to our Constitution are one, to recognize, foster, and reward outstanding scholastic achievement. Two, to simulate interest in the field of communication. Three, to provide an opportunity to discuss and exchange ideas in the field of communication. Four, to promote and encourage professional development among communication majors. Five, to establish and maintain close relationships and mutual understanding between faculty and students, and last but not least, to explore options for further graduate education. The membership in Land of Pieta is composed of undergraduate students who have declared and shown interest in the field of communication and have also achieved a high level of academic excellence. To be eligible for membership, students must have completed 60 semester hours in undergraduate credit courses, have a cumulative grade point average of 3.0, have completed the equivalent of 12 semester hours in courses in the communication major, have a grade point average of at least 3.25 in these courses, and be in the upper 35% of their graduating class. To the left of me, there are three candles, and they symbolize the values of ethos, pathos, and logos. At this time, I would like to invite up the faculty to come forward to form a line. Dr. Hale will call the new members. To the inductees, as Dr. Hale calls your name, Please come forward to receive your certificate of membership and pin. Please remain on stage until all of the inductees have been called up. I see everybody's lined up chronologically according to height, it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> John Mason Biter, Alexander Boyer, Noah Edward Burroughs, Brandon Cabral, Tyler Clough, Scott John Colombo, Jr., Anna Marie Dabkowski, Emily Dennis, Paige Gravelin, Benjamin Pidobono, San Diego, San Diego, Bahia <coughs> Guterres. I did better with the Guterres. <laughs> Nehemiah Jackson. 
Edward Prout. Caitlin Kugler. Amber Ashley Lamma. Aaron Melissa Matigue. John Petrucci. Kara Pritchard. Caitlin Ramusen. Madison Renault. Madison Jane Remick. Brianna Rentando. Kevin Russell. Cameron Schultz. Anthony Sarah. Marissa Starkel. Emily St. Lawrence. Jackson Toomey. Joshua Werner. Lisa Wilson. Aaron Windsor. all you inductees. As a newly inducted member of Lambda Phi Eta, do you accept the challenge to maintain the high academic and leadership standards set forth by the organization and to serve as examples for the achievement of excellence in the field of communication? And do you promise to work toward the achievement of the purposes and goals as set down by the National Organization of Lambda Phi Eta? If so, please answer, I do. And now, I present to you the newly inducted class of the Tau New Chapter of Lambda Pi Eta for the 2018-2019 academic year. Welcome. 